playing some more automation and today we are building the pickup truck the dragon's breath worm the last one was called the drake and i'm continuing with the name for dragon because the drake is a dragon without wings and then i decided well next is called the worm because i can and it actually sounds kind of cool i think so i've chosen this body because all of them suck uh, yeah, there's no good pickup truck buddy, apparently in the 60s. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna choose this, and I hope I can fix the... This looks weird. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can fix that later. Anyways, let's uh, set up the chassis, and... Well, there's not much to do, so... I'm just gonna do it right now. These and coils. Actually, coils are better for off-road, but leave are better for capacity, and that's what I'm gonna do here. I should make the There you go. Now, let's move on to the engine. Yeah, it's gonna be big old V8. Push rod, cast iron. Now, I'm gonna design the engine, and I'm gonna as always, show it off to you. Alright, so here's the finished engine. It is still a V8. It is. So what I set up, I just changed it to a 3 liter. I have a monitor damp, I have flat plane cast iron crank, and I have heavy duty on roads and pistons. Because I think I need them. No, I don't actually. Then let's remove And yes, cast iron is a correct choice here. For the top end, compression 8.9 to 1, 38 cam profile, 36 springs and lifters. In order to have this thing be low revving, but good power on that low rev. Uh, a 2 barrel carburetor, twin, a 2 barrel twin carburetor with a standard mid intake. Makes it look quite nice, I think. Uh, letter regular fuel, a 30.2 fuel mixture, 61 ignition timing, and 4600 RPM. Shortcast headers, a dual exhaust, 31.8 millimeters exhaust size, which is 1.3 inches, I think that is. And baffled mufflers front and rear. They obviously restrict power a bit, so I could bring this. Sure, let's do that. And uh, power. Or sound. Sounds quite nice, even, even if it does sound like a slight bit muted. But oh well. Then I'm just gonna immediately go here and see. That's bit better. And then I'm just gonna set up the entire car and then show it off to you. All right and here is well the car done just needs to detailing. It has a longitudinal 4x4 gearbox, manual, 4 speed, does the 173, that's made 171, has the 36 I can get, 12 seconds to 100 but who gives a shit. Uh, spacing quite high, manual locker of course, off-road, chunky off-road tires, bigger and rear than the front because otherwise the thing would terminally oversteer. So you can see I've used the 
uh, advanced home settings to move the wheels further out, just, you know, to make it look really off-roady. Biggest tires I could get with slightly like, smaller rims are to, you know, have big tires. Uh, solid discs in the front, drums in the rear. Should work. Aerodynamics, off-road skid tray, a lot of brake airflow, a lot of cooling airflow. Uh, yikes. Uh, give me a second to just... I didn't realize that. Oh man. Okay, guess I'm not dealing with that. And standard tier of premium AM radio because otherwise it would have a phone graph. It would put a phone graph in this, so it's just premium AM. How is it attached to a hard because you can't remove that? So apparently, you can remove this part. Uh, Drive out, central power steering, advanced 50 safety instead of 60 because 60 we only have advanced, and nope. Uh, Coldy, nothing. A bit heavier, weight a bit more to the rear. Progressive springs, off-road settings, I just left it there mostly because I'm dumb. So let me just do that. Because now everything is roughly balanced. I think the height of the right is fine. And uh, yeah. So now, as it's uh, and the utility operator, obviously it's not exactly off-road because uh, for it to be off-road it would need to be an SUV which is weird so uh, instead it's off-road utility because that's the one that doesn't need to be an SUV let's have a look at the detailed stats because I haven't yet durability is well could be better Spotting this is non existent. Comfort could be better, but it's fairly fine. The most issue is torque, but it needs that. And it could have had more quality in the interior and a bigger passenger volume, but who cares? Prestige, almost nothing. Safety, well, the chassis isn't very safe, it seems. Practicality should be very well, but the accessibility isn't there. Utility, uh, there you go. Power distribution is a bit. Problematic apparently gearbox with problematic gearing is a problematic, but differential and extra cooling is there. Matter metal resistance, but I actually put the the good environmentally resistant stuff in here. Well and yeah, but it's still very good. Off-road, obviously it has everything it needs for off-road. And the fuel economy could probably be better. Now I'm gonna design this thing to look similar to the previous strength by strike. And then, as always, I'll go and show that off to you. Here is the finished Dragon's Breath worm. I have made the front look fairly similar to the previous one with the Dragon's Breath badge and then four vents around it. I even reused the same, what do we call this part? And the lights in this case are square now instead of around. Um, I had to 
actually patch up something under here, though I don't think you can see it. So I'm just gonna stop that because that looks dumb. Uh, but yeah, there's like a patch thing here because otherwise that we have fucking Poland. Anyways, uh, I have a winch here and two of these metal connector thingies. I don't know, I just thought it would make sense to put that on a car like this. Uh, a few cables up here. These are towing mirrors, so they can technically be extended past a trailer. Uh, yeah, this is, you know, it happens because automation has issues with things like this. It really doesn't know how to deal with it. So uh, let's just not look into there. I try to keep some designs from the rear with just lights at the side and then these at the bottom framed by the bumper. And then I put the exhaust upwards because I felt like it. Originally, originally I had a giant like, you know, like uh, truck exhausts, like exhaust stacks coming up here, but that looked dumb. And I also had a snorkel, but that looked dumb, so might just redo it for later models. Um, what else? Oh yeah, running boards, because it makes sense, like, I think. And I put the wheels a bit further outwards, just to have it have a wider stance. Or a w wider base, you know, to be more stable. Um, yeah. There you go. Um, a green like the uh, previous drink breath. Now let's export this to BBG and then I'll see you there. All right, and here we have the new drink breath worm on the left and the old drink breath drake on the right. As you can see, the front looks fairly similar, though this one has new vents further out and this one has them further in, but I think you can still tell that they're the same car. Uh, lights similar, this one has a normal bumper, this one has a giant bash bar, or push bar, whatever they're called. Uh, I don't even have that, but I will. Uh, yeah, this here just to give more design. This one obviously has the winch, which this one doesn't. Those have coil uh, in the front and leaf springs in the rear, because why wouldn't they? And then this thing had one little downing so this one is to up the exhaust because I felt like it and the rear well as you can see the lights and then the lower ones are also existent on both though this one obviously looks a bit more clean because well I slightly better design cars now <laughs> uh, oh yeah I forgot the towing bar uh, I'm towing here. I'll just add that later and the central light is gonna be gone because I'm gonna add those back later for most cars once they become mandatory actually. Anyways, uh, as usual, let's drive the old Dragon Breath first and then the new one. Let's listen to the engine. Actually, I should forgot what kind of engine it is. Oh, it's a V8. Yeah, that explains it. Right, it doesn't really slide out much, but the rear wheels certainly have some issues, it seems. And I think the gearing could be better, probably, because the game does not know how to shift this thing correctly. But that doesn't matter anymore, hopefully, the new one is better. Oh. And yeah, suspension is good enough, I think. How much front and back roll? There's, there's a bit. Anyways, let's look at the new one now. Let's turn on the engine. It 
Sounds different. Brakes are certainly better. So there's drums in the rear, because why wouldn't it? Uh, as you can also see, I have added more graphs to the left side of the screen. One showing the uh, pedal, though I am only using throttle and brake myself, the clutch is done by the game. And you can see steering, and further up you can see the G-forces. And obviously you can see a simple brake debug thermal screen. Now, let's do the obligatory jump here. No issues, would be bad if it had any. Oh, turning circle is quite big. Or rather, that road is too small for this car. <laughs> and it doesn't really steer. Yeah, let's do this. Let's see what happens now. Well, drift. I mean, overall, uh, with just ripple drive, probably drives a bit differently. So let's do that for the way to the off road area. But uh, yeah, I like this car already. It looks like a heavy duty truck. And well, it feels sort of like it. Again, I just need to add the tow hitch to make it full. Oh. If I fully accelerate, yeah, we're gonna get some wheel we'll spin there. Now let's connect the front drive shaft again, and then let's uh, go, let's do the gravel circuit with all wheel drive on the thing. Yeah, it drives fairly well. Ah. Uh, yep. Now let's do the actual off road circuit. Get the, okay, the suspension does bottom out occasionally. Mostly because those are quick hard jumps and it doesn't dampen enough for that, I think. Uh, because it's more of a off road crawling suspension, I guess, is what the off road setup uh, gives it in game. Yeah. I guess later versions that are <laughs> less off-road and more will you, you know buy these just as a status symbol yeah those are probably gonna need a bit more dampening but uh, for now that's not an issue because yeah in the 60s if you buy something that you're probably actually going to take it off But yeah, it's not good on jumps. Anyways, uh, let's do the rock crawl here, because why wouldn't I? It's a perfect car for it. Lock 
up the disc and put it in low range. And it makes it no issue. So yes, this thing is fully able to crawl over rocks. So uh, yeah, it, it does what it, what it should. Oh, we appear to have some damage in the front according to the graph on the left, but uh, as long as you can't feel it, it's fine. Now let's do the handling circuit, where I have a feeling this thing is not going to do as well. Well, three, two, one, go. Yeah, it's it's definitely a big heavy truck. You can certainly feel that because it understeers a lot. I wonder if that's because of the soft suspension, not again kind of like skipping. Yeah, it seems to be like skipping a bit, and that's obviously reducing uh, the, the grip. That's the word. Sorry, it's. I'm recording this like right after getting up. Oh, uh, because I just want to get these videos done. This video done for Sunday. Um, so excuse me being a bit scatterbrained at the moment, and also my voice maybe being a bit rough because yeah, I look I haven't had my morning coffee yet, and yeah, just just bear with me for this uh, episode. Or for the BMG part of this episode because automation I recorded like a few days ago. Anyways, uh, handling well. The main issue is that fr the front wheel is kind of skipping. Like, hear that? Like, see, see them? See it bounce? You can see it generally bounce there just because of the soft suspension that obviously reduces grip. So I'm guessing that is the main issue, but yeah, there's nothing I'm gonna be able to do about that really without uh, decreasing the off-road ability of this car. Is that a word? Off-road ability? Anyways, uh, oh. Point is, let's uh, do one practice run around the short circuit. We're not gonna do the full circuit here because nope. And uh, yeah, let's see. Just so I can get a feel for how the car's gonna handle around here. Because on the small track, there was a lot of braking and lifting and just forcing the car around. It really didn't want to. And I have a feeling it's gonna be similar here. Though I think I can go flat out here. Yes. And then you hit the brakes. No, nope, maybe not that much. At least you can go over those bumps without issue. Around here without an issue. And now... Through here. Oh, okay, that was... I mean, that looked cool, but... That was not controlled. I mean, that was totally controlled. Yes, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I meant to do that. <laughs> and now you just run to the line and hope for the best. I mean, that... That's manageable. 
It certainly could be worse. Oh, see, I can just take this thing fully over these bumps and just... Oh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> that that left it up on two, two wheels. Um, no, it is shaking itself apart. Anyways, let's head on to the actual time trial. One twenty six six seven seven. All right. So, uh, you should have just seen a one twenty. What was it? Twenty something. I, I forgot. But a fairly reasonable time. And uh, yeah, I have to say I'm quite happy with this car. Or truck, I guess, if you want to be specific. Um, for a big, heavy off road truck, bounce, uh, it drives away really well. Although, uh, of course, when steering, there is that issue of the front wheel is kind of just like you, you don't get grip past a certain point of steering. Which I guess is normal, but uh, with this thing, is it's, it's quite extreme. I think this is essentially the most you can turn because anything else is just gonna. Well, it's quite controllable, apparently. And, uh, well, it's easily able to crawl over rocks and stuff, so that's good. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and the other one's still standing here. No, that's a lot of shake. And one more thing I wanted to compare is size. Because that's always something that people care about. Well, it's certainly bigger. It's not longer in the front, but it has a longer wheelbase, so it's longer in the rear. The bed is certainly bigger. Rear is way larger, and front is larger, and it's higher up. So, uh, yeah, if that's one thing you care about, it's bigger. And with that, I'm going to end the episode. And I will see you all next time. See ya!